So, um, hi, this is David Dillard, Sleep and Science Centers. I was going to chat a little bit about um, sleep apnea and headaches. And um, one of the things that we see a lot of in my specialty is headaches. And you have a lot of people that come in thinking they've got sinus problems or thinking they've got um, some other uh, types of headaches that you get scans to try and prove that after they've been on antibiotics, after antibiotics, or some other things. Um, and um, and they don't have anything. Uh, they may, may not even have allergies, which are oftentimes also associated with headaches. We'll see a lot of allergy websites will discuss allergies per se as having headaches. And um, there's some debate about whether or not they can directly cause headaches. I'm of actually the I'm of the opinion that they probably trigger things like migraine-like headaches or cluster-like headaches, and may not actually create the headaches themselves, but um, Migraines um, are a neurotransmitter disorder in the brain that can mimic all kinds of things. The classic migraines, Caesar used to have migraines, and um, it, they, you know, he would recover from these, but he would have, uh, or it's legend that he has migraines. Uh, he would recover from these headaches you know, after having what looked like a stroke, and it would get better. So the classic, quote unquote, classic migraine was a headache that was associated with loss of some sort of neurological function, like oh, one arm doesn't work, and it would go away after a few hours. Um, and um, what we've discovered is that, that that same neurotransmitter disorder can basically mimic almost anything that you can have. It's people, some people have visual changes, some people have um, all kinds of other things, from dizziness to ringing to uh, facial pain. And sinus pressure is a very common problem that's associated with that. And you can even have congestion on one side that um, that goes along with this. And it's usually one-sided. So if you're having headaches on one side, you should sort of keep that in mind as being a possibility. Again, uh, a lot of things can trigger this from lack of sleep to, um, to uh, whatever you're eating. The classic things they look at are certain red wines and cheeses. Uh, and other uh, types of foods that have sulfites in them. Um, and uh, there's a lot of diets on the web that you can look into, and we'll probably post one here eventually um, to, to look into. So if you look at migraine diets, that's a reasonable thing to look into. Um, the classic migraine is associated with uh, a sort of transient headache that lasts a few hours. Um, it can have either lights or light sensitivity uh, you can have visual loss with it as well, but that's obviously something to be ruled out and checked with an ophthalmologist and a neurologist first. Um, and that's not something you should play with. Dizziness uh, is another type of symptoms. Obviously headaches. They used to be called vascular headaches because of the sort of pounding, thumping that you would get out of this. Um, they can be triggered by lack of oxygen and fatigue, so that's why they're associated with, with sleep apnea. Sleep apnea patients are frequently waking up with headaches in the morning, and that tends to be something that's sort of a classic story. So if you, you are having these sort of sinus problems that are ongoing and you keep getting evaluated, the key to it is you need appropriate imaging and consideration for all types of different things that can cause headaches, including migraines. And a trial of migraine medication is oftentimes indicated. Obviously something you need to discuss with your doctor, information for you to sort of digest and have a little bit more um, uh, of an ability to give uh, a better story but uh, these are things to think of so you want to note the timing of the pain you want to note the location of the pain you want to note the character of the pain uh, and those will be helpful to the doctor and anything that relieves that including like sleep and just rest or going in a dark room those things are very helpful congestion can certainly be associated with it you want to document in your own mind when you go into the doctor so it's as, at least as useful as possible to you know, note how long each one of these things are going on. You know, if you're having drainage, the character of the drainage. Migraines can sometimes cause drainage from the nose, not always, but sometimes, and uh, the drainage can be clear um, and uh, you, you want to get that checked out. Migraines can also be triggered by um, things like sinusitis, etc. So these are some things to look into. Um, David Dillard for Sleep at Sinus Centers. Hope this is helpful. You guys have a good day. We'll see you soon.